So 3D printed parts are great at being light, but how do you make them heavy? And how do you do that without increasing shipping costs, but still maintaining that premium feel of something with a little bit of heft? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video as we go through four different ways of making your 3D prints heavy. So the very first and most common way of making a 3D print heavy is to just make it solid. But this is probably the worst way of making something heavy. Even though it is the densest way because you have fully solid plastic with no sorts of voids or gaps at all, you are using the volume entirely. The problem is, is that you now have something that takes a really long time to print and uses a lot of material, which is kind of expensive. So making a 3D print solid filled is probably one of the worst ways of making it heavy, even though you can make something the heaviest possible. And not to mention the fact Fact that something heavy is really expensive to ship. So if you want it, you actually want to ship something light and make it heavy later, which we'll talk about a bit more here in just a moment. The other real common way of making a print heavy is to add something heavy to it, generally mid-print. So with this one, what we did was we printed with low infill and then paused it part way through, and then you're able to fill up the infill with something like sand or lead shot or whatever it is, some heavy item inside of it. The issue with this though is the fact that you have to pause mid-print, which can lead to defects because the part can shrink as it's cooling down, and then you can see that transition point. You also have the problem with potentially contaminating your 3D printer if you're dumping sand sand into it. So it's really not the greatest idea. And lastly, if you're using something like sand or lead shot, you can end up with a maraca. And that's not necessarily what you want to create if you're making a 3D print. You want it to be feel solid and premium. And having something shaking around on the inside, it does not feel solid and premium. This is a good way to make it really heavy because you can use denser items than just the standard plastic. But again, you're shipping something that's really heavy. So now your shipping cost has increased to move something along and your cost have increased because you have this extra really special step that requires a lot of effort to make this thing heavy. So it's really not the best way of going about it. If you work with 3D models for printing, you know the struggle. Digging through folders to find the right file, dealing with slow transfers, or trying to open a model that requires yet another piece of software. It's a mess. That's where today's sponsor comes in, Blueberry AI. It's an all-in-one 3D asset management platform designed to streamline your workflow. With AI-powered search and auto-tagging, you'll never lose track of your designs again. Need to transfer a massive STL or step file? Blueberry AI makes large file transfers fast and seamless. Plus, you can preview over 100 different file formats right in your browser. So no more bouncing between softwares just to check a model. And when it comes to security, Blueberry AI has you covered. With multi-level permissions, version control, and real-time backups, your files stay protected whether you're working solo or collaborating with a team. If you're a designer, game developer, or business owner using 3D printing, this tool will save you time, money, and headaches. Use our link below down in the description to try Blueberry AI today and take the hassle out of managing your 3D files. But let's now go to option number three of four and look at this one. This guy has a very interesting kind of feature because he is printed with default settings. It could be printed with any settings that are available, doesn't need any special stoppage, and quite frankly, weighs less than a pound instantly without ever having any sort of issues. But his secret is this and this. This is a custom template to where you can just remove a negative from inside of your part, and then you can have an external piece that is printed that fits that negative so that this can be filled with sand or ball bearings or whatever it was and packed tight and then slid into the bottom and screwed in. But this template is actually available through our files down in the links down below so that you can take any model you have, subtract this template of threads and cylinder and that kind of stuff and know that the dimensions are just right. Now, while this has threads, you don't really need it. You can actually design this to be a press fit to where the layers will just interlock and you shove that in there as far as you can go and it won't come back out. So no glue is necessary so long as your tolerances are good. But again, you don't really wanna rely on tolerances so do design some sort of retaining feature like threads into these types of parts. And that way you're able to have a part that can be shipped dry just like this and then your users could fill it up with sand and gravel to make it heavy. Or you can have it pre-filled and the final item assembled and be done so that you can create something heavy to be shipped to the customer. But there's one final way of doing this that almost nobody ever uses because it's just really obvious and folks don't really realize it, but it's the most affordable and least effort. If you take this concept of the internal channel that's subtracted and some external container, you don't need the external 3D printed container. This is kind of an expensive part to add into your stuff. So why not just use an external part? Inside of Teleport, we have third-party parts that you can include with your items so that when an item is printed, we can include the third-party part and 
ship it to your customer for you. This is what this is. This is a water weight. What you can do is you can take the negative for this jar, remove it from your 3D model, and then when the model is printed, this jar is included with it, it all ships as a very light package, and then when your user gets it, they can fill this up with water and then place it into the bottom of their 3D print and it'll pop right in. The negative that we have for this one has a few retaining bumps so that the standard jar pops in and holds there. And then you can have a phone charger or a toy or whatever else it was that feels premium to the user after they add a little bit of weight to it. So it ships very affordably, but ultimately it has a really nice final customer experience that is really easy to get set up and they don't have to find gravel or whatever else it was because everybody has access to water. So this is probably the best way of adding water weight. All the other ways have their places. Solid infill is best if you really need just something super dense and have full control of slicer settings, it's fine for smaller sorts of parts, but radically increases cost. You can use sand and pauses in order to add weight to the print, but now you're dealing with a very special sort of process. You can create external inserts that can be pre-filled and then put inside of it, or you can use actual third-party parts in order to add weight later on. The third-party parts are generally the best because you can ship something really light, but then have something really heavy on the other side so that your customer gets a premium heavy part and you don't have to pay for premium shipping. Over in Teleport, you can connect your Etsy store, eBay store, whatever your e-commerce site may be, directly into our giant print farms. Whenever you get an order, we will print and ship that item directly to your customer for you. And we have a catalog of third-party parts that can be included with that print for any order that you make. So go ahead and check out Teleport and start growing your 3D printing business over at slantpod.com. That's slantpod.com. Have a great day, everybody.